Black Widow Custom Bows presents Aero Tuning with Ken Beck. Experienced archer, bow hunter, and Black Widow CEO Ken Beck has helped thousands of shooters by sharing his extensive knowledge of bow and arrow tuning. Why is uh, good arrow flight important? Well, you know, if we're just shooting field points, we can have a lot less than perfect arrow flight, and that fletching will correct us so quickly, it's not really a problem. But when we put a wing on the front, that is a broadhead on the front, then it becomes a problem. So consequently, we, uh, we think uh, arrow flight is pretty doggone important. Well, why? Well, accuracy, improved accuracy, better penetration, because an arrow that's uh, zigzagging back and forth upon impact loses a lot of energy and perhaps one of the greatest benefits is just the, the confidence to know that when you go to the woods your broadheads are flying real good. We believe in using a bare shaft because a bare naked shaft tells you the naked truth. Paper tuning is good. I think uh, shooting a bare shaft and watching the flight of that shaft is better. We suggest starting out uh, at close range into a soft target because if it's really bad arrow flight, you may miss the target. You may bend and break an arrow in a hard target. So start with a soft target, start at five yards if it looks good, move back to 10 if it still looks good, move back to 15. If you really want to zero in, like uh, tuning them in on a, dialing in on a uh, microscope, you can move back to 20 or so yards. One of the things you need to remember that uh, when you're fine tuning, you need to set your bow up the way you're going to hunt. If you're going to hunt with a bow quiver full of arrows, then you ought to have the mass weight of that quiver on that bow when you're doing your, your bear shaft fine tuning. So we have two major problems that we're going to deal with and we'll approach it this way. We've got the paradox, or what we might call the, the horizontal flex. Some people refer to it as, as fishtailing because with fletching on there, it, it fishtails. And also then we have what we might call porpoising, which is a, a, a vertical movement. So we have two different problems to deal with. We suggest dividing them and approaching one at a time. We suggest uh, trying to solve the horizontal flex, the paradox first, intentionally knock a little bit too high, and come back to that later. For a right-handed shooter, if the arrow is too weak, not stiff enough, it's going to flex too much, come out of the bow, knock left for a right-handed shooter. And if there's no fletching on that arrow, it's going to stay knock left. In fact, as it goes down range, it's, it's going to get worse because it's picking up air that's going to move it to, to the right of where we intend to hit. If it's too stiff and doesn't flex enough coming out of the bow, it's going to come out knock right and as it goes down range, get worse and worse as, uh, and may even miss the target if we're badly, badly tuned. So we've got the problem of, possible problem of knock left too weak knock right too stiff. If it's just right, it's going to be like a water moccasin swimming straight across the river. It's going to go in a straight line, flexing as it goes. In slow motion, you'll see those arrows going through the paradox all the way to almost 20 yards here to the target. We would suggest then picking out a spine that you think might work and start a little too long. And if, as we shoot it, it's uh, too weak, then we can cut a little bit off. Assuming uh, that we aren't able to solve it by cutting it shorter, we run out of arrow, then the only other option is to go to a stiffer spine and do the same thing and uh, hopefully solve the problem. If on the other hand then an arrow is dynamically too stiff and it's coming out of the bow then knock right and we need to make it weaker, some possibilities there would be a heavier point to cause the arrow to flex more and decrease its dynamic spine. There aren't a lot of options there other than to, to go to a, either a longer arrow or uh, back down to a, a lighter spine. All right, you southpaws, don't forget for a left-handed shooter, it's everything opposite is what we have been describing for a right-handed shooter as far as knock left and knock right is concerned. All right, let's assume we've solved our spine problem. We're we're getting an arrow that's flying reasonably straight most of the time at 15 yards or so, and now we have to and need to solve the knock high, knock low. Well, if I see someone shoot a bear shaft arrow and they get knock low, 
my reaction is hallelujah because I know we can solve that problem. All we have to do is raise the knocking point a little bit and we can solve the problem. On the other hand, if they are getting knock high and shooting off the shelf, I don't know whether we can solve it or not. This is the biggest problem that I've run into in helping people tune over the last 25 years is solving their knock, knock high problem. If they're shooting off the shelf, here's what happens with some people. Some people induce an excessive amount of vertical flex. Upon release, the arrow does this and goes forward over the shelf. When it gets to the shelf, it's down here, flexed away as it goes through the paradox, uh, slightly flexed away from the bow, hits the outside corner of the shelf and bounces knock high. Most people can work down and find their sweet spot, but maybe one out of 10 people or so induce an excessive amount of vertical flex and cause this shaft to bump the outside corner of the shelf and deflect back knock high. Sometimes, uh, what are the causes of this? Sometimes you can see them at full draw, they come back and they really cock that, uh, that arrow and you'll see the arrow bow down in the center before they release. If you're one of those uh, one in 10 people that induce an excessive amount of flex in the shaft, vertical flex in the shaft and can't solve it, you would be wiser to knock slightly high and have that arrow cons more consistently come out a little bit knock high than you would for it to inconsistently bounce off the shelf, knock high. Sometimes uh, we can solve that problem by putting a double knock. I don't have a double knock on this bow. I've uh, got a knock here above and then a, uh, a serving knock below. That keeps me from pushing this arrow down away from the knocking point and cause that arrow then to bounce off the shelf. A lot of boyers have put a, a very narrow shelf on their bow as we do. We think that helps some people at least um, get away from this problem of that shaft as it goes through the horizontal paradox and the vertical flex hitting the outside corner edge of that shelf and causing it to bounce high. And so a narrow shelf gives it some clearance there. Whereas a wide shelf, it's more likely to hit the outside corner of that shelf and deflect, deflect up. Another problem we run into is the quill on the feather. Because if the quill of, hits the shelf, it too can cause deflection. So we need to try to position our arrow knock or glue them on in a, in a way that is going to allow this arrow to pass over the shelf without a quill hanging down that's going to drag on the shelf. What I like to do is take a fletched shaft and cut the feather off and leave the quill. If I got this bare shaft to fly, okay, fly reasonably good. Now I go to this one, and if I'm getting deflection off the quill, since there's no feather there to immediately correct it, it's going to tell me uh, what's happening and, uh, and let me know that I've got a problem and I can experiment until I can get it to fly good. When you're in the backyard uh, practicing, I'd suggest uh, having a a bare shaft. I call it my coach because uh, that that shaft is going to tell me if I underdraw, I'll get knock right. It's a little too stiff. Or if I overdraw, then I may get knock left. If my knocking point is slipped, it'll it'll tell me. So it becomes a, a coach for you if you practice with a bare shaft in your practice quiver. All right, we've done our bare shaft tuning. We have this uh, arrow flying pretty good most of the time. Uh, not only maybe the, the bare shaft, but we've experimented a little bit with uh, one with the feather cut off, just the quill there. And we've uh, got our knock, uh, arrow knock rotated so that we're not getting any deflection off the shelf from the quill. Hey, we're ready to, we're ready to put on some broadheads and go hunting. The ideal thing we're shooting for, we ought to be able to back up 15, 20, 25 yards, shoot three broadheads, shoot three field points, same way to point and broadhead, and these six arrows should all group the same. That's uh, another acid test that we've done our job properly and we're getting good arrow flight. A word of caution, do not attempt a bare shaft using a broadhead. Toby's a right-handed shooter. This is an arrow that's too weak, therefore we ought to see knock left. All right, that arrow was going knock left. Actually, when it hit the target, it straightened out some. A target can cause it to lie a little bit because once it hits that hay, it can change. But the position was knock left before it hit it. Here's an arrow that's a little too stiff, or 
the right-handed shooter then, we should see knock right. Knock right. This is a shaft that uh, should be about right if Toby does everything he's supposed to. It ought to fly reasonably straight all the way down there. Oh, dead center. 